Good news, our new RV is ready to pick up. Bad news, we've got to travel 2,500 miles round trip to the Indiana-Michigan border. There's a snowstorm right now and it's in the teens. I guess we're going on our first RV winter road trip. <laughs> Welcome back to the RV Odd Couple. My name is John. And I'm Mercedes. Long story short, we sold most of our possessions in pursuit of freedom, independence, and adventure. Because life is so short, guys. It is. And in this video, we're going to talk to you all about our first winter RVing trip. And we're going to talk to you about what we're doing to prepare for this trip. Because yeah. this is big. Yeah, we just got a phone call from Forest River. Our rig is ready for pickup. We didn't really think it through. We didn't realize that they would be ready around December and it's not a great place to RV in the wintertime up near the Michigan-Indiana border. So in this video, we're gonna share our experience with you, how we're planning for it, preparing the truck, preparing the RV, and our experience as we go. All right, so traveling in the winter in your RV is no joke and there's so much you have to prepare for. But in our individual circumstance, we had a lot of challenges that we were facing. Mm -hmm. The first of which is that we could not postpone this trip. This is not something that we elected to do in one of the coldest months of the year for fun. Leaving it there wasn't an option. The other challenge we had that we considered hiring someone to bring the new RV to us. Right, so it was an option. We couldn't pay somebody to bring it down to us. We needed to bring Sandy up to swap out all the contents. Uh, the other problem that we had was we were pushed right up against Christmas. Yeah, and that was rough. Sage has a doctor's appointment on the following Friday, which was going to be the 27th. So we had seven days to get up 1,250 miles flip the contents into our new rig and then get back as fast as we could praying that the weather was going to hold for us and that we were going to get make it back safe we also had to worry about water lines freezing in the rv yeah we had to worry about the truck going that much of a distance so bubba gump is the name of my truck it's a gmc 3500 hd and it's been absolutely wonderful i love the truck but i had to prepare bubba gump for that trip so i checked the oil uh, I checked my my uh, fuel filter. It was due for a change in about 1,500 miles, so I needed to go buy a new fuel filter, get it on the truck. I needed to check all the fluid levels. I needed to make sure that I had enough depth. I needed to make sure that the truck was in good top physical shape to make a trip like this. He checked everything, I guess you would say from head to toe. <laughs> head to toe, and we actually have TPMS, tire pressure monitor systems on both the rig and the truck. So on Sandy, our rig, the fifth wheel, and on Bubba Gump, we've got TPMS as well. So those are really, really important things to keep an eye on when you're traveling any distance for that matter. The other thing that we had to prepare, which added to this, was that we had to get our old RV back to factory settings and what we mean by that is we had made a lot of modifications in Sandy we had added a desk we had added a big shelf we had done all this stuff and we needed to prepare Sandy by getting her back to her original setting so we had to get the old couch back which was in storage mind you it was all the way in the back of the storage it wasn't <laughs> easily accessible we had to get everything that we had removed we had to put it back and so that added a huge level or layer to this i mean it's hard enough planning for a trip but that made it harder it did and so it was the first time that we had actually visited our 10 by 10 storage here is that we had placed the contents that we thought we really needed when we yeah. had left a year ago. Yeah. You know, we look at it a lot differently now. We paid $1,100 for the year to keep contents that we thought we needed to save $1,200 for the year. more than that. Oh so going God. to that <laughs> storage facility and opening that door and looking at what we thought we needed was, was kind of funny, you know? So we had to do some modifications, move things around and get it back to where it was when we had purchased it. So because we knew that we needed to swap all of the contents of the RV, we decided that it would be a good idea to kind of preliminarily empty Sandy, get um, some stuff that we know we wouldn't need out of the RV. So John pitched a tent and we put it I put up my stuff. clamshell, yeah. And we just started unloading the contents that we knew we wouldn't need, mostly tools into Sandy. Obviously I kept the tools that I knew I might for need. For safety. Just for safety purposes, but pitched a tent and we were both blown away by how much extra stuff we had when we looked in that canopy tent. Yeah, and so we're thinking, okay, we've emptied this RV pretty good. The move is gonna be really simple. We're like expert movers now and look <laughs> at how good we did. 
And so um, that was a big thing that if you don't need to take it with you, don't take it with you. Right, <laughs> that we learned right. the hard way. And and having the tent up was actually, you might think that's not safe, but we're at an encore park that's gated. All of our neighbors knew what we were the doing. The park owners absolutely love us because we did a review for those guys. So they all watched out for our stuff. We weren't afraid of leaving it behind at all. The next piece that we had to do was we had to prepare Sandy for the trip, right? Our 2018 LOK. When you're traveling in the winter, you need to be prepared for everything, right? Up in the north, things can change very, very quickly. Oh, so yeah. I filled up all my propane tanks so we had heat. Luckily, Sandy does have heated pads on all of the tanks so that they won't freeze. We've also carry some heated line with us when we're going to hook up if it gets below zero. But if you don't have hookups, if you're unsure if that you're not going to have hookups, Propane heat will keep our rig warm in case we do have to boondock on the side of the road. And that was another really scary part is that all of the RV parks by our final destination were closed, it was for, closed for the winter. That's like a sign, right? <laughs> that you probably shouldn't be going there if the RV parks won't even stay open. But no, we went there. Yeah. So we knew that we had to be able to boondock. We had to be boondock ready. We we had all Build the, the propane tanks. We had the antifreeze that we needed in case we needed to drain Sandy's lines if the weather changed quickly mm -hmm. on us. But more importantly, we planned our trip so that we knew we could stay at a campground in Kentucky and we could stay at a campground in Georgia. Interestingly enough, they were in the perfect place that they needed to be. One was 400 miles away from Florida for our first night. The Kentucky one was another 450 miles, which was yeah. a big jump. Yeah. But it's, we, you know, we had to do it. We had to do what we had to do. Travel fatigue is so real. And when you do that to yourself, you have to give yourself plenty of time to relax. And we couldn't stay in Indiana. We had to get mm -hmm. back. So it was two major trips yep. back to back. And the day in between the major trips is a moving day, right? Exactly. So that's certainly not rest. So we decided to have three travel days there and three travel days back. But knowing that, I had to do some extra prepping on the food prep. So right. I was cooking up a storm and I was really trying to meal plan. Okay, so if it's going to be this many days and this many days, how many of breakfasts, lunches, and dinners? Because the last thing we wanted to do was just be eating fast food the whole time. Then exactly. Then we'd get sick. And, and babe, you did a great job. The food was fantastic. We've never traveled that good. We both learned a lot from our first year of our being and Mercedes has become a rock star we had everything in the cool that we needed the snacks the good the, the, the munchies <laughs> the burritos the uh, the roll-ups that she made for yeah. lunch it was absolutely fantastic and I tried to have foods that were actually yummy because you know when you eat healthy and you're like oh this is penance I don't want this but at the same time it wasn't just junk food that then after you eat it you feel like oh why did I eat this right, right. Oh, and that brings up another thing that you mentioned. So because we may or may not have water lines, I may or may not be able to do laundry, right? I don't know how long we're gonna have hookups. I don't wanna leave any dirty laundry during this trip because I don't know how long the trip's gonna be. And I have to do really small loads. So part of getting everything ready is just doing as much laundry as possible. So I had to do all the laundry ahead of time and make sure everything was clean to make sure that we had enough warm clothes without having to do laundry. Exactly, and again, Mercedes, you were a rock star. Mm -hmm. It worked out perfect. So the other thing that we did to prepare for this trip was that we went to the library and yeah, that was my idea. But seriously, we got some audiobooks and some, cause you need to have good stuff to listen to and it's easier to listen to a book than actually read it. And, and Mercedes we wasn't going to let me listen to news for 2,400 oh my miles. Gosh. So no, I wanted to be happy during this trip. Okay. <laughs> so no, we listened to, to some podcasts and, and some positive stuff. That Mercedes, I'm not listening to this. That when you're doing a long trip, make sure you are not just fueled with good food you're fueled with good music yeah and, and stuff. positive vibes so as soon as we got the call that our new rv was ready we wanted to rush down there as quickly as possible <laughs> because we're in the early part of the winter it's only going to get worse and we wanted to be back for christmas but one of the biggest tips that we could give to you is look at the weather and look at it one week two weeks out what we ended up finding was that by postponing our trip three or four days we actually hit much sweeter weather yep. so sometimes when you're traveling in the winter you do need to postpone travel a couple of days because you're not just dealing with the weather of your current location you're dealing with the weather of your end destination and everywhere in between yeah 
and we were looking at a snowstorm that was coming in that day on Monday up there. When we got up there a few days later, there was snow all over the ground in most of Indiana. Yeah, and we also had this like torrential downpouring in Georgia that we had to narrowly escape. So we had one storm that went by. We were running through because there was another storm down south. This was like... A, Eye of the needle, man. Yeah, Literally, was, as we went up, the storms just came underneath us. They had just cleared above us. I mean, a window of opportunity opened up for us that it was not going to get below 32 degrees at any time during our trip. So it was made for us. God took super good care of us. But you know, one thing that we didn't account for, I think we did a pretty decent job planning. But I think one we did thing, a really good job. Yeah, but one thing that we didn't account for was that we spent our last night in Sandy and didn't even realize it was our last night. And that was hard. I miss her. Yeah. I wish I had realized yesterday that that was my last night in Sandy because now I'm kind of emotional <laughs> and I'm growing attached. So when we got to Indiana, we got to the hotel and guess what? I didn't have the suitcases in an accessible place. So we had to bring in plastic bags. All of the stuff that we would need for the hotel. It was right? so nice to be able to take a long hot shower. Um, we're super excited to get our new rig. And um, one thing that I learned the hard way is I should have packed for the hotel yesterday because we ended up having to take all of our possessions in plastic bags. So yeah. note to sell, if you know you're gonna be in a hotel, make the suitcase accessible. Yeah, we have an overnight package with you. We look like a bunch of vagabonds running we did. from the RV into the hotel. With King Super's bags. King Super's bags and pulling the kid. And luckily we didn't bring Skippy on this trip with oh, us. We need to talk about that. So another challenge we faced was, is we didn't want to bring Skippy on this road. We knew this was not gonna be a fun ride. It was. We rough. knew it was gonna suck. It was gonna be rough. <laughs> Yeah. We're going to make the best of it as we went. Mm -hmm. So we went ahead and we paid to have somebody babysit Skippy for us so that Skippy wouldn't have to go through the stress of laying on the back seat. There's plenty of room for him, but there was just no need to put the dog through that type of a stress. Mm -hmm. And so we left Skippy behind with somebody that would take really good care of him. You know, it was hard enough. I can't imagine if we had brought him what that would have been like. Yeah, it would have been just that much harder. The next morning, I think we got up at 5.30 in the morning. We were both really excited. It was dark out. We walked out to the truck. We were kind of starting to realize, hey, we didn't sleep in Sandy last night and we're about to bring her back. So, um, but it was really exciting heading over to the plant. We drove in pulled in there they were all waiting for us as they, they opened the door they had donuts for <laughs> us now we do want to thank everyone all the employees at forest river that came in yeah. two days before christmas those guys and women on the line they're awesome they were so helpful to us they were so kind these are just hard-working americans that went out of their way to give us everything we needed to try to get us back out on the road we didn't just learn about the individual things in the rvs but but we were talking about families. We were talking about our kids. They were showing us pictures of their kids and grandkids. Yeah. And, and, you know. And they're really proud of what they build. They yeah. don't build these to break. They really, really are proud of the product they, they put out. We pulled the rig in, and that's when we started making the transition from Sandy into what we're not sure what we're going to call this one yet. Yeah. I would like to call this new rig Piper, right? Sand Piper. And I want to call her Sandra because. Sandra is a more grown up, you know, <laughs> sexier maybe. Um, you know, and then there's a third option too. Roxanne. Mm -hmm. Roxanne is another one that Mercedes likes. So we are going to let the RV Odd Squad decide what the yep. name the new rig is. You guys pretty much taught us how to RV in 2019. We would not be where we are without you guys. We love you guys. The prayers that we got, the love, the text, the information that we got as we made this trip, kept us company as you always do in every trip that we take. We're so grateful to you all. Next week, we're gonna share with you all about our maiden voyage. We're gonna share with you about all the mistakes we made swapping the contents out. And we have so much that we learned the hard way that we wanna share with you. So make sure you subscribe and ring the bell so that you don't miss what's coming up. We're gonna share all of it with you. Take the shoes off. Oh my god, man. This, this is, is ridiculous. <laughs>